Hey, this is John from Over the Moon with an update on the Fall Part 2 Unbound. The Fall Part 2 is now basically done. Is it that time already? And it plays, looks, and sounds great. So it's time to start talking details, and today I've got some great stuff to show you. First, however, if you've been following the project, you probably know that it was due to come out about now. So you're probably already guessing that I'm here with a spot of bad news. Uh, we needed to delay the project a few months. Unfortunately, that puts us into the main release window for the AAA industry, which is kind of suicide for an indie. For that reason, we've decided to take some extra time, make sure that the build is really solid, get a proper marketing campaign together, and launch probably in the first week of February 2018. If you're a fan who's been waiting patiently, I know that might be frustrating. Proceed. Quickly. T must steal. Uh, when I talk to people about project delays, I get all kinds of questions. Um, like, aren't you worried that uh, people are going to get bored? Um, that you've waited too long and that the launch will go poorly? And I always feel like, uh, yeah, actually. I worry about that a lot. And many other things. But what makes me feel better is knowing that I think that all the time has been worth it. So now, <laughs> most of all, I worry about just how to tell people what we've done and why it's great. You see, I'm not sure what our messaging needs to be. So I want to just openly share with you guys today why I think the Fall Part 2 has taken so long and why it's so much more rich than Part 1. For starters, average playtime in the Fall Part 1 was about 3 to 4 hours. We've had a few 20 hour plays in Part 2. We've gone from basically two main environments in part one to eight in part two. And furthermore, the environment fidelity has probably doubled. We've gone from three fully animated characters to 13. One playable character to four. A completely revamped control scheme with two new combat mechanics and many other features and subtleties. But it really isn't mainly about quantity. The main reason that part 2 has taken so long is because of how much more thought has been put into each aspect. There are no random or meaningless puzzles in the fall part 2. It's been our goal to offer our fans a deeper level of gameplay and story integration than they've ever seen before anywhere. That's a high goal, but I think it's important to aim for something. So today, I want to show you guys an example of how we're trying to achieve this. Each section of gameplay is an embodiment of what's happening in that particular moment of the story. In one sequence, our main character, the AI known as Arid, is tracing a mysterious remote attacker across the global network. To find assistance, she invades and takes control of a lone robot who seems oddly self-obsessed. <laughs> One. One. Greetings. I am Eric. Get out. The unit is an escaped member of a collective and is self-obsessed because he has a hard time telling himself apart from the other drones. I am distinct. Why did you do that? This body is mine. To make matters worse, his presence has caused the Collective to begin integrating his behaviors, the things that make him unique. Your host begins to lose himself. You need him to remain intact, distinct. So what do you do? Players discover that they might be able to inject the Collective with ideas that their host finds, well, appreciate the art in this magazine. That is not art. If the many integrated this technique... Pathetic. Perfect. Once they figure out how to do that, their host will be able to maintain self-differentiation. I am an artist. You are now able to purge this subcluster. I can do anything. Well, almost. You have proven yourself distinct. I... 
I felt the many. When working with a self-obsessed character, you'll have to deal with his individuality, what makes him unique, and his personal preferences. The Fall Part 2 Unbound is partially about boundaries, and the section I just described is part of a larger quilt work of these scenes. Arid interacts with several characters, and each of them have their own unique themes, and therefore gameplay. Your self-fixation is an impediment. We don't do bits of gameplay separated by cutscenes. Our gameplay sections are the game story, and that's why it's taken so long. Some sections have gone through several iterations. I'm not kidding, we've had entire sequences of gameplay that were fun, that have been cut, because they weren't quite right for the story. Because of that, each section has its own unique theme and feeling that fits with everything else. Individuality, for example, is just one of the things that Aerith has to grapple with as she tumbles headlong into her own bizarre story. And the story is quite bizarre. Welcome to the spa! But it's also a lot of fun. We like big ideas, but the game needs to be simple and enjoyable without a lot of difficult cognitive stuff. I am burdened with emotional data which has not been efficiently processed. The Fall Part 2 gets dark, really dark. But it's also funny, and the combat is a lot of fun. It's been given much more polish this time around. So whether you're fighting an enemy that learns from your behavior, or fighting off a mysterious infection that's unusually persistent, Everything has a place. So there you have it. If you've got an idea how I can promote this stuff, I'm all ears, so do let me know in the comments. Thematically integrated gameplay for a uniquely compelling experience isn't exactly the best tagline, because what the hell does that mean? And it's not like there's a lot of people already looking for that. So I'm struggling to find our messaging, hence the open format of this video. I do have a few ideas though, um, now that we've got some extra time. Um, one thing that I've frankly just wanted to do for a while anyway is make a few simple developer insights videos focusing on really rich ideas that I see in other fantastic games to promote the value of rich stories with cool ideas. The benefit here is obvious because I can say, hey, remember that game you love? Well, part of what makes it awesome are these rich ideas. So having rich ideas in games is awesome. And by the way, that's what we have. Um, so look for that closer to our release. Oh, and one last project update. Our ESRB rating came in and we were given an M for sexual themes. So you can look forward to finding out what the hell that means. I don't want to talk about it. I think that about covers it. Until next time, um, thanks for watching and I really can't wait to show you guys the fall part two in February of 2018. Until then, take care.